Hello, Salt Strong Nation. Joe Simons like diamonds. Luke Simons like diamonds. What's up, dude? Not much. Just ready to talk fishing. Talking about an invincible chemical or chemicals, plural, that could literally destroy your chances of catching fish. Saw this post recently, and it reminded me of a podcast we did probably two years ago, Luke. Right. Yeah. yeah it was time's flying. Ago. Yeah. That was at least two years ago. That seems uh time's flying. Very popular one talking about just how well fish can smell, which was shocking to me after reading, uh, I guess, a couple of books on it, but uh, pretty amazing. Yeah. There it is. Scientific angler. Scientific angler. Paul Johnson, this book, if you can find it, sometimes it's hundreds of dollars on Amazon, but the scientific angler and Paul Johnson was the first one to actually do a lot of testing like a scientist and even went underwater and went to the point of testing out all these different smells and he would call them smell tracks i believe was yeah smell tracks is his terminology and there was neutral ones which meaning it didn't have any effect on the fish at all there was positive ones which actually increased the feeding frenzy which is like what we have with our dr juice saltwater slam scent and then there's negative ones that actually hurt and actually could destroy your chances of catching fish. And we're going to focus on that today. And we'll put a link in the show notes to that podcast. It was our most downloaded podcast, I think of all time, because uh, it was it's so fasting, right? We all want to know these little things. And I think so many times, Luke, you know, we get ourselves in the right spot, which is the toughest thing to find that 90 10 zone. And like with our smart fishing spots app, we're, we're, we're literally showing you where to fish. And then with our tides, we show you the best time of day to fish. I mean, we're trying to simplify it, but there's still these little small little nuances, right? Like if you don't have your Slam Shady or your Power Prawn or whatever you're using, even your live bait, if it's not rigged correctly or if it's helicoptering around, you're just not going to catch fish. But there's also these negative smell tracks. Yeah, let me just throw a thing out, something out there just so that the level of importance is uh, is known. And so we we all know how how good dogs can smell. And the biggest shock to me after reading that book and, and then seeing it in other places as well is that dog or that fish can smell way better than dogs can. It's not even close. And, like, and so like that thousands was, of times better on the average Yeah, dog. it's almost like the, the benefit that the you know there's humans down here, dogs here in the middle, and then fish are about the same distance above dogs that dogs are to humans. So once I saw that, that's when I was just like, okay, I need really need to pay attention to it. I've will admit for many years until recently, I was really not a believer in scents. I never used them. Um, and then since hearing that feedback, and then uh, shortly after that is when uh, when Dr. Juice reached out to us and ended up making this, this custom scent for redfish, sea trout, snook, and flounder, and then started testing that out. That's when I finally realized, okay, that this scent is a big deal. And even if you don't believe that fish go towards positive scents, at a minimum, we at least need to make sure that we minimize the negative scents. Um, some of which are like gasoline, like if you're gassing up your boat on the way to a fishing trip, you have that gas on your hand and then that, that gasoline gets on your lure or on your line. That's a, that's a huge, huge mistake. And that has certainly caused many people to get skunked. Sunscreen is one that not many people talk about. And that's, uh, Joe has some really cool data on that. Yeah. And so, here's what happened, you know, in our fishing club, we have a private community and people get asked questions. And, and, and occasionally we have people who are struggling, right. That have just, that can't seem to crack the code. And, and we're almost like doctors, like, like, what does a physician do? If you come in, they start asking questions, right? All right. Like, did you see bait? Right. Did, did you see, did you see activity in the, yes. Okay, cool. All right. We got that. Cause that's usually number one. All right. If you're fishing in a dead spot, then you don't really have a chance. What lure are you using? What were you hitting the bottom? Uh, what was the depth? Like we start asking all these questions. And then this one just came out recently, like anything else? Like, cause it all, it all seemed like they should have been catching fish. And like, I'm, we're all kind of sitting here scratching our heads. And then all of a sudden it was like, well, uh, we, you know, we did end up like applying sunscreen right before we started tiling all of our knots. And now it's just like, that's it. And it brought me back to the scientific angler. And I mean, just watch, I, I actually don't spray sunscreen uh, in the water because it's horrible. I mean, it, there's studies where uh, on like for even coral reefs, I mean, it can destroy reefs. So do not do this. But if you want a quick little test that is not going to destroy the water per se, 
try to go get a bunch of white bait this weekend and spray your hands down with sunscreen I'm, you don't have to like like pour a bottle in. just spray your hands down and then dip your hands into your live well and watch how quickly those fish die they literally like suffocate and so it this is obviously it just ex expands and expands it the more sunscreen you have and the more things that you're touching but here's the crazy crazy thing and i shared with this luke right beforehand and i took a picture just so you guys can see it so my daughter savannah we were going out in the boat and uh, I couldn't find our normal sunscreen. And so I had some little spray bottle thing. And this was almost a month ago. And we have a black top out. So we have our carport and then we have a black top uh, out to the out to the street. And so I had her out there and I'm just spraying her down. And she's obviously got her feet on the her bare feet on the black top. And I'm just spraying her down. So I don't know if you can see those two little feet there luke I, I got a better picture but just to give oh, you an yeah. idea that's the black top so the white gonna, stuff is the spray i'm gonna zoom in that you can clearly uh, as day see her feet this is 30 days old I'm, I'm honestly feeling guilty that we're putting this stuff on our kids and our own this is on her skin this is 30 days later on black top it, and and by the way, I li we live in Florida. It has rained a lot in the last 30 days. I've tried to go there and scrub it off. It still will not come off the blacktop. So I think a lot of people make the mistake, especially with this. I'm going to call it crap because it is. And this is the kid stuff. This is not the, what I spread in her, by the way. It was some other thing that had all kinds of gooey stuff in it. But like this banana boat and the copper tones, especially the spray stuff, if you just look on the back of the active ingredients, anytime you see words that you literally can't pronounce, like acid, also bendane and humana to kill me, bendane. I, <laughs> I mean, these are crazy words that no one even can pronounce. Is kill and me this, in there? Did it was, was kill me actually in there? Or did you make yeah, kill up? me was not in there. That, oh, okay. I, I added that part <laughs> in, to the back. On, I should uh, say they're not even they're not even hiding behind it. No, <laughs> um, <laughs> that would have been really bad. But I mean, th I think the misconception is, oh, yeah, I spray this on. And, you know, because it usually kind of rubs off my skin and I could still get sunburn, which is true that it's just all gone. There are still traces of this clearly, you know, even after you get a little bit of water on you. So I think a lot of people, they spray this stuff on them. They, you know, they rub it in. And they just maybe wash their hands in the water real quick and assume it's gone. That's not even remotely close. That is still on your fingertips. And if you start tying your knots right after that, or even an hour after that, I'm telling you, that could still be on there. Normally, when you're tying a knot, you're hanging on to either the hook, right, or the jig head, or maybe you even already have a, a lure, like a slam shady on a jig head, and you're tightening it up. I mean, you're literally touching that entire apparatus, if you will, the, the entire leader rig and and that i mean fish literally get turned off by that so i'm not that's not here to say that you can't catch a fish if you put sunscreen on I'm, if there's a feeding frenzy you can probably doesn't even matter but that's usually not the case right and so us is is kind of like fish doctors we're sitting here trying to eliminate all this stuff and sometimes it comes down to as simple as this and paul johnson in the book i mean he's got all, two chapters dedicated to this this whole negative smell tracks and he talks about two two people in a boat this is part of the study and one he would have them put sunscreen and i'll read the other negative scent tracks here in just a second and the other you know we'd have clean hands like just wash hands they'd be fishing on the same little boat right next to each other fishing the same little hole right I mean, everything identical, same bait, same line, everything. And the one guy would be catching fish after fish and the other one would catch nothing. So the same thing happens on party boats. Sometimes, yeah, you might be at that right perfect rock. But I mean, you could have someone right next to you who is literally tying up their leader line with some type of chemicals on their hands. And the fish are literally ignoring it because Luke's point, they smell so good. We know our dogs smell, smell good, right? Not smell good. Some of them really stink. But we know that dogs have the power of scent. And these fish are like the whole next level. I mean, it's it's really, really fascinating. So this is just one of those things to keep in the back of your head. If you're finding the feeding zone, which is the hardest part, and you're just not getting strikes, think through the things that you've touched. I mean, literally, Luke, you mentioned if you're just even pumping gas on the way there, literally wash, scrub your hands. Don't just kind of, you know, get a little bit of water in there. Uh, it's, it's really, really crazy. 
Yeah, and, and even to the point, uh, similar issues too. First of all, on, on the sunscreen part, don't use the spray sunscreen at all. That stuff's no. just absolute no. garbage. That was been the, I used it years ago. It was the worst I've ever been burnt in my life. My theory on that is easy on, easy off. I was scalloping and it was the worst my back has ever been burnt. I will never touch it again. And now after seeing this, right, it's just some some gnarly stuff in there. The fact that it's been stuck in the driveway, it's crazy. But uh, but number two, as far as just as, as making sure that your your line, your lure, all that is as scent free as possible. One tip as well that I, I know a lot of people do is they store their rods and their reels in the garage. And there's, and they have like for mowing lawns and stuff, they have gas cans in there as well. And that, that gasoline is just basically, basically gets in the air and will attach itself to whatever's in there. And now it's on your line, right? And it's on your lure. So highly recommend keep your gear indoors without gasoline uh, scent or any kind of chemical, um, any kind of chemicals touching it. And then also too, when you are rigging up, um, yes, you know, obviously you can use sunscreen, use the natural stuff, the, the chemical free. I'm sure Joe has some, some recommendations. I, um, I use that white bottle. I can't find it for me uh, for the life of me right now, but uh, I think it's out in the boat, but, but just use the stuff that's, that's natural zinc and a couple other chemicals are in there. But, but most importantly is tie your lines before you go out fishing. I usually do it the night before that way, I'm, you know, after shower and everything, everything's as scent free as possible. Tie it all in. That way it's ready to rock. And then when you do put sunscreen on the next day, it doesn't matter because you're already locked and loaded and, uh, and, and no problems. Just minimize, long story short, just minimize the amount of, of, uh, of any kind of scents that get on the line or the lures. Yep. Yeah. The one that you're referring to the sunscreen is Skin Medica and it's not tons of other uh, ingredients. There's only one or two. If you really look at the stuff dermatologists recommend, that you put on your skin, not have chemicals all over your body and in the water. And this is the stuff that should not kill fish and should not be killing reefs is zinc oxide and titanium dioxide. I mean, it's really those two. Uh, and that's it. Then, then you have different versions of is it, you know, nano and all this stuff, but those are the two, the only two active ingredients you should have in any kind of, and then it's not even sunscreen, it's sunblock. It's literally blocking the, the sun's harmful UV rays versus with chemicals, you're still, it's still soaking in. Like the whole thing's a hot mess. I, it, it's, it's amazing. I mean, it's just the power of these billion other brands who are literally lobbying against, uh, you know, lawsuits. But I mean, there's studies going on trying to say that this is actually causing more cancer than not even putting sunscreen on at all. I mean, isn't it crazy? you know 50 60 years ago sunscreen hadn't even invented yet there was none of it or it was very very rare and now we have multi-billion dollar companies selling sunscreen and skin cancer melanoma is the highest it's ever been and it can't just because the ozone layer i mean that's really really wild that now more people than ever wear sunscreen chemical based sunscreen and skin cancer is at all-time high I'll let you guys yeah. fill in the blanks there. Yeah, I know. Once I switched over to the natural stuff, the, the more natural stuff, I should say, is that I used to I used to use banana boat, and I still do. I still because that's I still have tubs of it. But uh, but I don't put it on my face because when I used to put it on my face, it would eventually get in my eyes. I could be sweating and eventually end up in my eyes and like really stings the eyes. And and then the natural stuff does not sting your eyes. At least at least I've never had any issues with it. So that was just a, a, another of many reasons to use the good stuff and not the, uh, the stuff on like the discount, discount sunscreen aisles. Your whole Those life got better. Problems. Did you get you, ever since you got engaged? I mean, all kinds of good things have been happening to you. Yeah. yeah it's been life good. was horrible prior to that, but th <laughs> this is not a sunscreen pitch. You guys can do whatever you, you want. That's still your decision. But when it comes to fishing, our job is to help you catch more fish. And I would say, be very, very careful of that. Even like, you know, when I go to fish with you a lot of times in, in uh, super early mornings where I'm, I'm leaving the house at 430, I'm just, I'm good about, I've, I've put sunscreen on before I even leave, even at four in the morning, and then wash my hands uh, really well. And I've already, you know, tied my lures, but the tougher part is, you know, if you do need to tie in the middle of the day while you're out there, and that's the tough part. And there, you know, Dr. Juice does make that scent remover stuff. I think it works. Uh, I, I personally don't use it. Uh, I just one it's one more thing I don't really feel like carrying, uh, but it, I mean, it can't hurt. And so Dr. Juice, I mean, he is a, a scientist. It's a real guy that created that. 
to be able to take all of those bad chemicals and the l all the things that are bad, uh, the, the negative smell tracks based on this book really is where it came up with it uh, to be able to take it off of your skin. And it's wild how long that will stay on there. And you would never know, like it's not, you're not going to be able to smell it. You're not going to be able to see it. It would only be done if you went into a lab and got your, you know, your fingerprints done that you'd be able to see that stuff. So really, really fascinating. You mentioned the garage. This is an important one. And, and this happened to me recently. Uh, we've got a, a little guest house that's also our garage. So in there, we had it all painted. And I keep some of my, my tackle in there. And I realized like I was kicking myself because, you know, this is a small, it's like a little small one bedroom and you got those paint fumes in there for really a couple of days. And, uh, and I, I ended up just redoing all my lines, all any reel that was in there. I just redid the whole thing. I'm still not going to risk it because that's what this book is saying. To your point, Luke, you could leave your rods and reels in, in a garage. And if there's paint, if there's any kind of chemical, that's even if you can't smell it well, I, I'm telling you the fish, fish can, and that stuff can get into your line, uh, especially gasoline. That was what the, the book was really hammering home is people that have the lawn mowers and they have a little workbench and they got, you know, little gasoline cans or, you know, paint cans or whatever, that stuff can actually absorb into fishing line. Uh, I mean, it's crazy. Um, the, the, the small stuff we don't think about. So, um, and, and maybe this makes you feel better if you had a bad day and you saw fish everywhere, like maybe it was, maybe it was me, maybe I'm not a bad angler. Maybe it was just the, the sunscreen or some other kind of negative smell track, but, uh, it, it's fascinating how, how many times that, uh, that this has probably happened to us, but we can look back and, uh, and now we just, we know the questions to ask now. And, and as we keep uncovering these different layers of things they were, or were not doing, and this is kind of always at that last Hail Mary. Hey, like, did you happen to be pumping gas or have any chemicals in your hand or sunscreen? And all of a sudden, like, oh, actually, I did. I'm like, well, that could have been the problem. Yeah. And even smokers, too. So another reason yep. not to smoke uh, is that in that book, too, there was a guy who was a smoker and a non-smoker. And the non-smoker was just totally out fishing the smoker. And it was because, you know, tobacco or whatever's in cigarettes is a, is a negative scent. And so, uh, again, long, short, short, just any of these scents, odds are, if it's not natural, it's not good. And, uh, and so try to keep as scent free as possible. And then also highly recommend putting scents on your lures. Again, I mentioned before, I was not a believer in it. Now I totally am. Now I'm like, I, if I don't have some scent to put on lure, I feel like um, I, I just don't feel my, don't feel the, the confidence that I normally do. And so now I, I, I personally use that, uh, that in short, the saltwater uh, slam scent from Dr. Juice. But there's a lot of other stuff out there because it's just important now knowing that fish smell much better than dogs which smell much better than humans we need to make sure that at a minimum we're at least masking any sort of negative sense that we have with the positive scent and i really do think that that positive sense actually do make a, a difference as well so i'm a total believer in using sense there's a lot of sense out there so we're not going to say you have to get one or the other uh, it's just make sure to, to use something because um, it's just, it's crucial. I, I was, I'm still been blown away with, with how good fish can smell. And it makes sense too, right? You put a, we go down the keys and we put a chum block in the water and it is shocking how fast the fish just automatically come up. They're on the bottom in 30 feet of water. And then within a minute, they're up at the surface. So it is, it is incredibly, uh, just water has that ability to move sense around and those fish can really pick up on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is crazy, right? I mean, it, it is the last couple times in the Keys. Uh, I, I want to say you could probably count down less than 60 seconds. And it's not okay. one or two, it's school, like, whoa, where did these things come from? And uh, yeah, that's, that's a really, really crazy. Um, the Dr. Juice one that and that is one that we have tested. So I, I, you said you can use whatever I would try that, you know, get the little small bottle at a fish .com. That's our online tackle store, the Dr. Juice. I mean, we've got countless testimonials uh, and these are people who used to use procure or nothing at all. Like this stuff absolutely works. And, and you've done a couple of tests, yeah. you know, on top of a dock, like at nighttime where you see red and they're fighting over it when you have the scent on there and they're not fighting over it when you, when you don't, I mean, we've got multiple tests like that with video uh, evidence. It's uh it's pretty wild. And so what I do, if there is a situation where I've got some sunscreen on my, my fingers, like in the middle of the day and I have to retie, 
Uh, you know, there's, if I don't have anything to, to get everything off, I'll, I'll, I will wash from the salt water. I'll retie. And then I will put Dr. Juice all over. I'll put Dr. Juice on my fingers and actually rub the line and rub the lure and just cake it on just to try to mask any of the bad scent that might've been on my fingers. And, uh, yep. and, and you've probably watched, if you've seen any of our live podcasts, Luke does that all the time because I've seen people in the comments say, what is he doing with the line? Uh, he's just, he's just rubbing that stuff, even on the leader line and go all the way up. If you want to, uh, just, I want, I, if you're like me, time, your time is valuable. You don't get the fish every single day. You want to maximize it and you want every possible advantage over the fish. And, uh, to me, trying to mask any bad scent is a no brainer, especially when these Dr. Juice stuff flat out works. Um, the only bad news is they start, might start biting your leader line, but no, I'm just kidding. They'll bite the lure first. Yeah, and, and if you already if you do use it, which is the best one I found so far, is that Dr. Juice, the the, the saltwater slam in particular, it's oil based, which is a positive. You don't need a whole lot, and you spread a thin layer of, over the lure while it's dry, especially. Mm -hmm. And water and oil don't mix, as we know, so that that oil will protect, basically have uh, it'll keep the water away. So it'll first of all it'll it'll give off some scent as it goes through, and it'll basically lock in anything that's underneath it to prevent any negative scents from getting out there. So I, uh, again, as I mentioned before, I'm a total believer in it. I, I just recommend people use scents. Uh, that inshore the saltwater slam is the best I've found so far, but there's, again, there's others that'll, that will certainly work as well. I just, I just think that the oil-based ones have the advantage that they have, you can't see it. So it doesn't discolor the lure like some other ones do. And it flat out lasts longer. I have done some tests, uh, one of which was with Procure, which, which used to be the one that I've, I was uh, I was using after realizing that fish smelled so good, and the Dr. Juice, even though it was clear, I, I thought in my head that the the gel type, which is Procure, is a gel based. I thought that it was lasting longer because you know it was just chunkier and I could actually feel it. But then uh, every time I've done it, I would always apply one with one hand and one with the other, and the Dr. Juice hand it would literally would would still I could smell it like days later, whereas the the gel based dissolves in water so it eventually dissipate and leave um so that was when i was okay like this oil based is legit and um uh, and so now it's all i use just because it seems to be more effective you know i want to apply it like once i just do it once per trip every time i change lures it goes on and then i let it rock for two three hours or more yep that's good all right let's cover the negative smell tracks according to this study from the paul johnson you ready for the first one L serene which is human skin oil that is the oil that if you've ever put your fingers on a piece of paper if you've been sweating that day or anything you can kind of it almost looks like a little a little oil that that is the L serene we all produce it naturally and fish hate it uh tons of studies on that and so right off the bat if you are tying your line or messing with your lures or live bait for that matter and you just have a lot of that natural oil on your hands, you're already at a disadvantage. Another reason to mask it with uh, like a Dr. Juice. Number two, nicotine. And these are not in any particular order. Uh, nicotine, you mentioned earlier, smoking, uh, certainly a negative. Petroleum and derivatives, including gas and motor oil. Human lotions, uh, I'm sorry, human suntan lotions. Uh, which is what you know we spent the majority of this one talking about bug repellents like things like deet obviously makes sense but then again uh, people put all kinds of chemicals in their bodies and don't think about it chemical plasticizers um, and then perfumed soaps so don't think that you can take the wife's cute little perfume soap and and think that you're safe that could actually make it even worse so uh, you don't want to have a bunch of uh, perfume soaps. And that is it. That's the, the list of the negatives. We can do a different one of the positives or just go listen to the full podcast we did on this. We'll put a link to it. Uh, really, really fascinating. But just wanted to share that with you. That could be a reason that you are having trouble catching as many fish as your friends or maybe even people on the, on the same boat. Sometimes it's as simple as the, the small stuff like that, where we, we feel like we're doing everything right. And uh, it's just like, holy smokes, I had all this stuff on my hand. Uh, and that might have been the reason that, uh, that you found the fish, but they literally could have been ignoring you. And like I said, try it out. And there's there's plenty, if not the majority now, of full-time fishing guides, especially here in Florida, 
that do not allow this stuff on their boat. They're like, get that crap off of my boat. One, because people get on their hands and it does kill all of their bait really, really quickly. And number two, just like that picture of my, my daughter's permanent feet marks, I mean, it, it destroys your boat. I mean, it can destroy leather. Uh, it's crazy what sunscreen, I mean, gel coat. I mean, it's, it's not because it's chemicals. Uh, it's really, really wild, especially with that aerosol stuff. It just it gets everywhere and it's so tough to get out. I would, I would personally not put it on my body and I wouldn't put it on my boat, et cetera. So be careful with that stuff. Stay away from the spray. Absolutely. Really? Or just any of the chemical stuff. I'll, I'll, but I, I feel like this is what a lot of, especially a lot of guys get. Uh, one, out of maybe laziness. I used to buy this too until I started studying this stuff and got skin cancer myself and started kind of opening my eyes. Like, all right, maybe I should see what I'm putting on my skin. And uh, and so I used to get this. But two, like, you know, especially for your back, you don't want your buddy rubbing your back. And so a lot, a lot of guys just get the spray. But I, man, I, I, I'd rather just put a shirt on. Uh, then, then put that kind of stuff on my, on my body. So hope that was helpful. If uh, you guys have questions, thoughts, uh, other things that you've seen out there that have helped or hurt in terms of uh, fishing in, in the scent, uh, let us know, put a, put a little comment down below and we'd love to hear from you. Um, and if you want a little bit more on this same topic, we'll put a link down below to that podcast about the smell tracks. And of course, if you haven't checked out the smart fishing spots app holy moly uh, the thing just keeps getting better and better every single week testimonials have been flooding in from our members who are using it and going to the spots that they're seeing right there on the app and all of a sudden catching fish right away uh so cool seeing this thing work so well so that's free it's free to all of our members get in before we raise the price there and once you're in you're locked into your price for life that is our promise to all of our members we like to reward the people that that uh, that help build this this club up to 30,000 plus and when we do raise the rates it'll only be going on new members going forward not the existing members so anything else Lukey? well that uh, covers it yeah just be just be mindful of the sense it is a, it is a big deal something that i totally overlooked for many years and no telling how many fish it prevented me from catching so yep. don't make the same mistake i did yep all right everybody we will talk to you in the next episode peace we out find out more at saltstrong.com <laughs>